back to the Curious Cube. And as you can see, we are in person. <laughs> this is very cool. Yeah. Like actually being in the same room as you guys. Yeah, I've never been, I've never seen you in real life before. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you? Three? <laughs> Now we get all the antics, but even more. Okay. Yeah, he does uh, this like every time. What like antics? we we encounter each other like in oh, you're at like CPW, right? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah. So we're at the same. We are in the same location because we are all at Mop. Uh it is woo summer. What is um, yeah. So this is the MA's Math Olympiad program held uh, every June at Carnegie Mellon University, uh, and it's held at Carnegie Mellon University in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, which is where we are now, we're in one of the rooms. Yeah. And so, um, we are going to be, inter well, before we talk about what this episode is about, like, how have we been enjoying MOP? What have we, what are we, do first of all, what are we doing here? This is my first time at in-person MOP, which is actually insane. So I, uh, unlike these two, I'm a residential assistant, which means I must, I take care of, you know, the kids' well-being and the camp's well-being, more so than like the academic stuff, which is what they do. Um, yeah, so it's been kind of fun doing this. I was looking for something a little bit more chill this summer since I busted my brain. Like I, I lost, like many of my brain cells turned white and died this school year. So like I needed a bit of a break. So I wanted to be like a residential assistant. And ironically, it's actually been like kind of, uh, it, it's been a bit hectic, but it's been a really good summer and um, getting to like hang out with all the moppers and these two losers. Come back! <laughs> oh, we can't do that <laughs> in, in our normal episodes. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing, but yeah. yeah. Um, but Holden and I are both TAs, meaning we like, the students take practice tests and then we like grade them. We tell them what they did wrong. <laughs> we write comments in red pen. <laughs> we draw turtles on their papers. We give style scores. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, and we like also like maybe teach a class or two. Um, you know, sometimes maybe problems show up that maybe one of us wrote on one of the exams. Hopefully this doesn't air before Monday. <laughs> <laughs> it won't. No, no, hey, hey, no. <laughs> Shh. Anyway, uh, so yeah, we are all here at Mup. It's been a really great time. Uh, Pittsburgh is a pretty cool city. Uh, actually, that that's a lie. It's it's, it's okay. It it's, it's very rainy sometimes. It, yeah. And very humid. Yeah. It, right, the weather is like a bit, mm. <laughs> but but it's very pretty to have like there are so many trees and so much like greenery. Yeah, and like Pittsburgh in the summer. Are y'all wearing green? Oh my so god! <laughs> Unintentional <laughs> color coordination. This is so slay. But yeah, um, Pits like Pittsburgh in the summer is actually really nice. A lot better than Texas. You and I both know. Uh, but yeah, um, and also Carnegie Mellon is a really pretty like campus. Like, I, I actually really like it a lot. Uh, but yeah, so today, we are here for a very special episode. We are interviewing the IMO team. Woo! The 2023 IMO team. For um, USA, by the way. For yeah, U the yeah. USA IMO team. Wow, no, 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 no. We're interviewing the Canadian team. Wow. <laughs> but yeah, we are interviewing the US IMO team, and they will be competing in July um, in... In Chiba, Japan. Yeah. At the IMO, the International Math Olympiad, the sort of premier international math contest for high schoolers yeah it's sort of the the apex, the, big one. <laughs> the the apex of the whole series of contests that ma runs for high schoolers yeah it's, it's well, the MA doesn't one. run that well the ma doesn't run the MA. like it's sort of it's worth they do, these two. They do it, the they, selection they, they do the selection and it's sort of that's the the top one for yeah high so a uh, really big honor to have these a group of very talented high schoolers here with us um so looking forward to interviewing them yeah yeah. Um, so let's get right into it. All right. Hi, IMOT. Welcome to the Curious Cube, our first like live in-person episode, which is super cool. Uh, so if we could just go down the line and just introduce, uh, introduce your, uh, if you guys could just go down the line and introduce yourselves. All right. So my name is Alexander Wang. I am going into 10th grade next year, where I am from Melbourne, New Jersey, and my favorite subject is number theory. Um, I'm Jeff Lin. I'm going to be a freshman in college next year, um, so I'll be at MIT, and I'm from Lexington, Massachusetts, and my favorite subject is combinatorics. I'm Max Liu. I'm also graduating. I'm going to MIT next year. 
Uh, I'm from New York, and my favorite subjects are combo and number theory. Hello, I'm Derek. I am also a rising freshman going into MIT. Um, I'm from San Diego, California, and my favorite subject is combinatorics. Hi, I am Eric Shan. I am, again, a rising freshman at MIT. I come from the San Francisco Bay Area, and I am indifferent about subjects. You can say that writing freshman job was integral to your introduction. <laughs> Hi, um, I'm Alex. I am not graduating next year. Uh, I am proudly representing Seattle, and my favorite subject is comic All right, cool. Nice to meet you guys. Um, so, um, as you know, we're all here at MOP, um, which is the summer camp that Mathematical Association of America runs every year um, to train the IMO team. Um, what have your favorite experiences at MOP been, and what has it been like in general? Singing Troop. <laughs> Do you want to explain what Singing Troop is? Sure, Singing Troop is uh, basically like we get together and sing a bunch of songs from like all sorts of sources like movies, and then we also get to listen to Holden play his godly piano. <laughs> <laughs> so true. God, one, there was like this one night where I came downstairs and Holden was just like sight reading stuff on the piano. It was amazing. How are you so good? <laughs> This is, the podcast is about the IMO team, guys. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like this is like a necessary part. I agree, I agree. Okay, yeah. Uh, but like, generally, like, the activities at MOP are pretty fun, I feel like. Because, like, when people hear about MOP, they expect it to be like you lock 60 kids in a room and have them do math 24 7. And I feel like this is like the general impression that, that like, people have. It's only four there. and a half hours every other day. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Plus, like, 77 kids this year now that we have international yeah. students. Oh, and, like, yeah. and like, it's only like three hours of classes every day. But like, seriously, there's like a lot of hours for us to like also socialize and have fun. And it's really cool at MOP because like you're with a lot of people who like share your sort of mindset. Because like at school, like I mentioned like a polynomial and then everyone around me just slowly backs away. <laughs> <laughs> but like here they're like actually interested in it and I think that's really cool. Yeah. I hate school. Yeah, there's, a, Fair enough. there's a lot of free time that you get because obviously like you're living in the same place with all these other people and like you're all hanging out together, you kinda of spend all your time together, you go get dinner together, so like you forge some forge some very tight friendships, some good friend circles, um, and you kinda of just do stuff in your free time, kinda of just whatever you want to do. Like you have an extra six, seven, eight hours on your hands like every day, so it's great. Oh, one thing I liked about MOP was that my parents weren't there. Wait, do they watch this podcast? <laughs> they probably will. Whatever. I think my parents watch sometimes. Like, well, yeah, I'm not sure about that, but I think the parents watch. <laughs> one other thing that's nice about MOP is um, because all of us are here for the nth many times for some well, well, this is very valuable. This is my fourth. This is like everyone's fourth except for Alex. But Alex is like, <laughs> Alex is like Alex, right? <laughs> like, yeah. so like, you know, like we already know a lot of people. We know a lot of staff. We know, uh, like, you know, when the right time to break the rules are. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Okay. Yeah. So, so we're having a great time. I'm going to pretend I didn't hear that. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I think people should sleep. I agree! <laughs> Wait, I do not. You should wake up at 6.30 every other day to go on a morning run. Because you your extra time. Uh, this, this, these are not mutually exclusive. Yes, they are. <laughs> you know, originally I was going to room with Derek. I'm very glad I... <laughs> I'm very glad I chose not to make a decision. <laughs> okay, yeah, okay. Um, is there any other mob thoughts or... Favorite card games? <laughs> Like oh, oh yeah, there's a lot of card games. There's a lot of Factor, card games for sure. Like many times and during our free time and like we just play a cards together in, in our dorms. Yeah. Mm. And I, I think playing cards is a lot of fun and we like also make up card games because we play cards so much. <laughs> <laughs> and also, like, yeah, and also like get to talk and hang out a lot. Like yeah. generally like very nice experience to be like in a lounge doing stuff that you love just with people. Yeah. That are also like that. Yeah. And I'd also say that it's like a nice setting. This is at Carnegie Mellon in Pittsburgh. So it's like there are sort of other things sort of vaguely near campus that there can be like excursions to. And also rains every other day. <laughs> oh, right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's not. Probably a reminder that the month is June. Yeah, the month <laughs> is June. Yeah. Yes, and yet it's still raining. The weather can be unfortunately warm and humid at times. Right. Especially today. Oh, it was very good. 
Yeah, no, I'm from Texas. I'm like, I should be used to the heat, but like the humidity, I feel like I'm just being like steamed. I feel like a steamed bun. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but today we did have partially blue sky, which is uncommon. True. And a bit of rain. True. Also true. While we were taking the group photo. I feel like perfect time. I feel like, I feel like Frisbee has kind of died this year, right? Like, Aww. like Frisbee's... But like other things have come to replace it. Wait, like people, people still do frisbee. Like like yeah, but like not nearly as much as last year. Like I think, I think like the staff composition has kind of changed a bit from last year. Yeah, I mean the meta is evolving. A lot of the a lot of the frisbee stands from last year are gone. Yeah, the meta is evolving, but that's so, not a bad thing. Like there's people like, are playing like pool and ping pong now instead. Yeah, right? there's like all sorts of new stuff to like be fun at. And a lot more cards, a lot more cards. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah, well, you know, there are some things that stay change, but some things stay the same. But like singing true. So true. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, moving on from thinking about mop to looking toward the future, um, obviously you all are the IMO team, and so uh, the IMO is going to be in Japan uh, in just a couple weeks, and I'll, I'll actually also be part of the delegation as an observer A, so I'll be like going to the jury meetings with Potion Love, the team leader, to like have opinions about which of the shortlist problems are you know we should vote for and which ones we shouldn't or something. But um, yeah, so the IMO um, actually for none of y'all is it your first international contest because actually you've all been to IMO or RMM before. Uh, RMM is a is a <laughs> contest in Romania that we sort of use as like a training to help like people you know. It's it's another it's a very it's a high profile contest, but it's not the IMO. There's only one IMO. <laughs> but yeah, um, so for none of this is it your first rodeo. So like, how have your previous international contest experiences been, and how does how how are you looking forward to the upcoming IMO? Well, you say international experiences, but you mean singular. I mean, uh, sure, but like <laughs> collectively, you have plural. This is, this is true. I guess I'll share first, but like. Um, so last year, some of you may remember me from last year's episode. I was on the team last year. We, we were at Norway. Um, I imagine it'll be different because it's in a different country, <laughs> other, other side of the world. But like, I've heard a lot of things about Japan, and like, I've heard there's like a lot of interesting stuff there. So hopefully, I'll have some time to explore it, and uh, I think it's gonna be very fun. But Wait, like, we're in Japan. Like, we're in Japan. Like, it's Tokyo. It's near Tokyo. Like, right next to Tokyo. Yeah. Oh. So, like, if you want to like go off to Tokyo to have fun, like this is definitely an option. Has anyone else here been to Japan? No, I've never been there. This is why I'm excited. First time, yeah, yeah, yeah. First time. Yeah. yeah. So like, um, yeah. But, like regarding actual IMO, like I think like it's a nice experience to get to like meet a lot of international people like from all over the world who share these passions. And I feel like perhaps I didn't do the best job of this last year, but like. Uh, I got another chance, and I may as well make the most of it. Like this year, we have international students at Mop, and they're like very interesting people. And I think some of them will be going to the IMO as well. But it's like generally, like it's like about these connections that can be lifelong and are so valuable. Yeah, just for a bit of context on the international students, the MAA uh-huh. doesn't only invite students from like USAMO, USAJMO, but also there are like a couple of exchange students from various foreign countries who like come here to experience Mop. So there are like fifteen to twenty. I forget the exact number of students. I think I was seventeen. Seventeen international students at MOP this year, which we didn't have last. It, it, we had it before the pandemic, but then last year there was still like COVID thoughts. We could international travel. <laughs> international, yeah, international travel. But this year we've had it back, which is really great to have. Um, and yeah, I think some of them will be out IMO as well. But yeah, but anyone else have thoughts on IMO or like how you expect it to be different from RMM or different from IMO last year or anything? You can also just describe your experience. Um, yeah. Yeah, so um, RMM was interesting because, well, I mean, I would say it was my first international contest, but this is true, like everyone here, everyone going into one. Um, like, I met a bunch of people from other teams, and uh, I think, like, for instance, there's one who is an international student from Israel who's here at MOP, actually. So, and he'll be going to IMO as well. So, like, it's really interesting how you can kind of. Um, Meet and talk to other people from other countries. Of course, IMO there's going to be a lot more people from a lot more different countries than RMM. So um, that'll be interesting. We'll see how many different people we get to talk to. Yeah, yeah. the phone numbers though. <laughs> <laughs> international phone numbers are tricky. Like you know, there's like there's like area codes. Some people don't know whether they have to add an international like code. Um, so 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 for context. Uh, <laughs> should I explain? Okay, I guess I'll explain the context. Yeah, sure. Okay, so um, at MOP, I, I've done a thing, I did this last year and I'm doing this this year, where like I kind of, in an effort to go around and talk to everyone, I like uh, 
make a switch and click everyone's phone numbers. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, like, it's kind of a meme, it's kind of a pretense to talk to people. It's also funny to have people's phone numbers. And so like when you're together at the in-person camp, it's like convenient to know how to reach people quickly, right? Um, Obviously, this is different if you have internationals and you're collecting international phone numbers, which like won't work in Japan probably. But, like you know, whatever. You know, Alex, the staff beat you to collecting all the phone numbers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably. But 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 but, but 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 you didn't beat me to talking to everyone, did you? Oh, oh that might be true. <laughs> Anyways, guys, comment your phone numbers down below. <laughs> That is probably like not a good idea. <laughs> wow, really? <laughs> Unless you want random people calling you. <laughs> so true. Yeah. Well, um, I guess I can talk about RMM. Like, it was a lot of fun, and I like am re really looking forward to going to IMO because all of these people are very good people and very fun to be with. And also, like, math is fun, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I'm excited for that, but it's like also kind of more stressful because it feels like higher stakes, like RMM, especially because I wasn't even on like the main team, like it didn't really matter, like I was just like chilling, but now that I'm like representing the US, like, I feel like there's kind of some kind of pressure for me to do well and it's kind of stressful, but I think I'm going to try to have fun. Just for a bit of explanation, at RMM there's something where like four people are designated as the official team and then there are another two who are just at, like not on the official team, but at IMO, like all six people, they're, the team tour is just the sum of the six people. It was a funny experience for me at RMM because like, maybe I'm not allowed to say this, but in some sense I kind of really only ever cared about day one because that was for <laughs> IMO team collection, a lot of day two didn't really count. So like, um, I kind of threw day one and I was like, oh no, but like, day two won't be stressful because like, I don't care about day two as much. I mean like, I did well on day two anyways, but like, I will be interesting because like, if I throw day one and like get tilted, like that's going to be bad. So I'll have to work on not getting tilted, I guess. Yeah. You got this. I mean, yeah, that's sort of like general thing. Like how do you bounce, you know, if you don't do well on day one, how do you sort of put it out of your mind to still do well on day two? I mean, that's sort of a more general thing in any part of life. If you are disappointed with something, how do you come back and just carry on? I don't know. It's a general metaphor. Right. I like generalizing or something. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And like, I think like generally like the stress that Jeff was talking about is also a very like normal thing to feel. It feels like there's a lot of pressure. Um, I guess it's like a bit superficial to say this because obviously it's difficult. You have to like sometimes like remember that like worrying is not going to get you anywhere. And at the end of the day, like you're competing like for yourself. Like I guess there's. I'll mention that like at the IMO awards ceremony, like obviously they tally all the team scores. They don't actually announce the teams. And I'm fairly certain this yeah. is intentional because the point is not like you're competing to get a higher score than those. You're like competing because you like math. Yeah, officially the IMO is actually purely an individual competition. The, the sum of the individual scores, like it's on the website and everything, but that's not like official official. The official awards are only the individual now. Okay, to answer your question, I guess I am pretty excited to go to Japan. Um, I do like Japanese food. <laughs> Japanese, food, Japanese food is something else. Yeah, my parents are also probably very excited because, um, well, before they came to America, they actually lived in Japan for 11 years. Wow. So I, I guess they're going back and I think they wanted to go back for a long time. So I guess they also really wanted me to go to IMO this year. Yeah, as to, um, compared to last year, uh, I do think, like, last year I did interact with the other internationals at IMO quite like a little bit. Like for example, I had a good time playing um, Ricochet Robots with it, with the Belarus <laughs> team. Um, but I think overall, I was kind of freaking out before the competition and, well, I think I'm a bit more relaxed this year and I think that's nice. I hope I'll get to take advantage of this opportunity to connect with the other internationals more. I think that is, perhaps one of the more rewarding aspects of the IMO. It is one of the more rewarding, I think probably, maybe one of the most rewarding aspects of MOC. So I think that carries over. Nice. Uh, so as the six members of the US IMO team, uh, you guys have, obviously a lot of eyes will be on you. Um, not only as representatives of the US, but a role model for a lot of uh, math students all over the US. 
Um, and is there any advice that you'd like to give to younger students who may be watching this? Well, I mean, like, there's like a lot to give. So I'm gonna start with like, I guess, perhaps some advice that you don't often hear. Um, sometimes like, I know like, if, if you look at people who are good at math, it seems like they lock themselves in a room and grind math like <laughs> 24 hours a day and like do like a whole year of I have a shortlist problems in like half a week. <laughs> but like, I feel like at some point you have to think about like whether you like end up burning yourself out. I think it's important that like, maybe take a break for a while sometimes or like don't like push yourself too hard. Like I remember like, um, before the IMO last year, I was like freaking out and I grinded out like several years of IMO and like, yeah, I grinded out like I think six years of IMO in one week. Um, <laughs> and then I felt very burned out after. Unfortunately, it was just like four days before the competition, so I had time to recover. But the, my point is that like burnout is real. And so like, sometimes like when you like take a break from that, you might come back with a different perspective. And so like, you don't have to make it all about like just doing as much problems as you can. Like that's not the only way to get better. Yeah, and I feel like math is like more about enjoying the problems than just like trying to grind and do all in some competition. Like if you enjoy the problems, like you'll probably like actually just want to do more math and like slowly like, get better. Yeah, like I, I mentioned how I was like a bit stressed last year. And I think like the thing that like dissipated that mainly, like I know I talked about like Swearing is generally not helpful, but the thing that really helped me was like, I will solve the problem. And I was like, ooh, there's a math problem. I like to do math. And I stopped thinking about like, <laughs> the pressure. Like on a similar note, like I think one very important part is like finding community of people who appreciate math as much as you do and will appreciate you for the way in which you love math. So like, for me in middle school, I was really fortunate because like my school had a program where a bunch of people would take a bunch of the same classes together as opposed to you know your usual middle school, which is like similar high school where all the classes are kind of mixed together. And there happened to be a bunch of people in my class who also enjoyed doing math. So that was super helpful for me and like, you know, kind of really encouraged me and kept me motivated. And I think like that's very important. It's important to find a community of people, whether that's maybe your parents, your family, classmates, people online who enjoy math with you. Um, like kind of are able to do it with you and then you, like you know whatever um successes you have you can slow it together um whatever tragedies you have you can more them together <laughs> yeah and like kind of making a journey with others yeah as opposed to focusing so much on the individual i guess to like add on to that like even though there's all the competition like it's good to remember that you can also like co cooperation is also a very important part of it like you want to be able to you want to have people that you're able to work with and like make friends, not just focus on computing model. There's a lot of other ways you can do math too, right? You can like read books, you can run organizations, you can do outreach, you can teach. Like there's there's lots of things you can do as math that's not just competitions. You, you know? can take HMMT. <laughs> you, can, you, can, you, can, you can you can you can you can you can do high school competitions. Yeah, there's lots of things you can do. So yeah, that's that's the point of community being important. I very much agree with that. I feel like some of the most encouraging experiences I've had are um, my middle school had a math counts club and I found that a like I found that a very great experience there are high schoolers from the high school I go to now went to now or <laughs> <laughs> and um, uh, being able to talk to them was an interesting resource and also just being surrounded by people interested in math because that was math counts but it's still math. That was a rewarding experience. Another uh, thing that really encouraged me when I was young was going to Armel. I think for some of the reasons it's a great experience because the Armel is very much in essence a team competition. Not like the IMO. They're like <laughs> <laughs> team round, power round. You really have to work with your team and um, in the end people don't actually care about the individual results which makes it a really great experience in my opinion. Yeah, um, I'm surprised that we didn't think of this, but high school competitions are amazing. Like, um, I personally, and I think everyone here will agree, like, strongly encourage you to find a regional team and like sign up for some travel math competition. It's super great, a lot of fun. And you get to miss school. That's and you get to miss school. You get to miss school. You get to like meet people from an area who do math. Maybe like you make new friends. Like you meet people who you can do math with in the future. Maybe you meet people from like around the country because you know it's. A travel competition with people from all over the country, right? Yeah. Yeah, your teachers will be like, oh, so how was your math thing? 
me. <laughs> I got that a lot. <laughs> Jeff? I mean, I, I, I definitely agree with this, like, whole surround yourself with other people who love math. I thought 2022 MOP was extremely inspiring to me because, like, before then, it was all online and I, like, didn't really talk to people and I was kind of, like, completely just burnt out. But then, like, 2022 MOP rolls along and I, like, actually get to meet people in person and then like I meet this guy who's like completely crazy <laughs> and then I, I like suddenly want to do math again and it's, it was just like really good for me and yeah um, yeah if you're ever lucky enough to like make mom it's an extremely good experience yeah I think doing things in person is like a lot better than doing things well, well I, I didn't know that <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that's crazy cool. that's crazy I will remark um my first mop in 2019 was, I think, a pretty pivotal moment in my life because, I mean, it was like kind of like a new discovery or something. I came to mop and I was surprised by how connected the community was and the fact that there is, I think, actually, surprisingly, an absence of competition up until, I guess, TST. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, imagine 2019, though. Yeah, but I think, like, it's strange because 2019 mop feels very unique in my memory. It was just kind of like a dream. Like, I think MOP is a very rewarding experience, and I think it did actually a huge part in, I guess, decreasing my competitive attitude towards math. I think I went from trying to win math things to just enjoying everything and bonding with people interested in the same things as I am. Uh, I think I'll give one final piece of advice, which I hope um, sort of ties what we've said, is that, like, as a person, you're like, not defined by your score on any contest. Like. I know it's easy to like think about yourself like, oh, I have to do on this competition, or if you get like a score that's lower than what you want, you become upset. But like, everyone has their off days, and like, furthermore, like these numbers do not like. There's so much more to you as a person than just these numbers. You are not a Dungeons and Dragons character. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so true. Yeah. So yeah, like because like um, at the end of the day, like, there's like so much more to math. Like there's so much more than math competitions that they are talking about than just like getting a good score. Like, that's not the point. The point is to, like, have fun, to learn new math, to make friends. There's, there's so much more to it. Yeah, and so much more to life, obviously. You have so more true. to your life than just math cards. You just, like, be a whole person or something. Mm -hmm. I guess I probably talked about this on the podcast. I know it's easier to realize once you graduate. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> I was joking to Luke once about post-math contest euphoria. <laughs> <laughs> when you realize everything else there is to life. <laughs> yeah. And part of it is just growing up and having more freedom once you grow up or something. Yeah, like part yeah. of it is taxes, right? <laughs> <laughs> part of it is taxes, yes. Uh, 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 or you uh, will have to leave the math contest for very soon. Well, but stop. Well, yeah. the math contest will. That's what brings us back. <laughs> yeah. This is like our state of denial, right? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> We're going to build off this. Um, first of all, I think um, maybe a, another piece of advice I would give out is to stop comparing yourself to others so much. Uh, I think like I think it is generally pretty hard to compare two people um, with like similar achievements in a sense of like how good they are. I think everybody has good days, bad days, and scores are very variable. How you perform is very variable depending on how much sleep you got, what the problems <laughs> are, and, like, I don't know, how sunny it is outside. <laughs> you never know. So I think like comparisons are not that great. I think just like maybe like in the sense of like I guess the MAA, the AMC series, um, you're not really competing against the people around you too much. You're kind of competing against the problems you're competing against to cut off. So it helps to think about it that way. You're competing against the problem writers. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Another thing, um, I guess the results don't matter that that much. <laughs> like even for the most, like even for the things that seem the most important, if you care a lot about a certain competition, it's not as important as you think. Because imagine, like five years down the line, like this whole high school math competition, Olympiad math stuff is in the past. It will definitely not be the primary thing on your mind. You will have much more to be concerned about. So this was just like, this is just an experience. Enjoy the experience and. Later, it will turn into a memory. Not that important one. Uh, I'm taking the next question, I think, right? Yeah. 
um, which is also the final one. Um, and the question is, is there like someone you find very inspirational or someone in your life that you would like to thank um, to bring you to where you are? Like this could be a teacher, a role model, you know, another classmate or friend of yours, or, or your parents, mm -hmm. for example. Like who, who helped you like stimulate your interest in math and you know, like lead you to where you are? Well, there are so many people that I have to thank for me getting like where I am today. First of all, when I was like really young, I was like this like really rambunctious kid and like there was like I'm honestly surprised I was like able to even do a math competition. They had to send me in a different room because they kept like getting up and running around and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but like yeah, so like when I was younger I think like I'm really fortunate that like since I'm from San Diego we have a really nice math circle. It's called San Diego Math Circle. Very creative name. <laughs> Um, and like their director, Dr. Brown, was very like welcoming to me, I guess. And so were the students. So I had to thank them first of all for like really helping me get into the math community and realize that there was like so much more to it than just like doing AMC eight problems. <laughs> um, I guess like another thing is like the people who like inspire me. Like for example, like I remember Po Chen came and gave like he frequently comes to San Diego and gives talks. Just like he goes to every single city in the U.S. and gives talks. <laughs> Um, yeah, and so, um, like, and his talks like really inspired me, and like, it, it was really interesting to see how he was able to like explain math in such a fascinating way, and like, he was able to be like, so, what's the word? I'm trying to think of a word similar to charming, but like, you, you, if you've heard him speak, you know what I'm talking. About. Charismatic. Yes, charismatic. Yeah. Exactly. And like, so charismatic in the like, it just like really inspired me. Um, and as well as the rest of the community, like all the other mockers that like we've been doing math together, we've been learning from each other, we've been growing together, as well as the staff who have been teaching us. Um, actually, especially going to thank Luke here because, yeah, um, I remember last year or like I guess one and a half years ago, I like believed I was just like unable to do math, and I think Luke really helped me like realize that like I should believe in myself more because at the end of the day, if you don't believe in yourself you're not actually going to get anywhere. Like, self-belief is like the first step to like pretty much anything. Confidence is key. Um, I agree. Yes, exactly. Um, I guess also have to thank my school teachers for putting up with the 20 days of class I missed this year, <laughs> competitions, and generally being like very supportive of my journey, especially my math teachers who wrote me recommendation letters. And, um, and that's just generally like to everyone who's ever wished me good luck on a math competition. It goes a long way. Well, good luck on that. I know this year. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate it. So there, everyone else's answer. <laughs> yeah, there are um, many people oh. I find very inspirational. Heck, the people around, like everyone here, is just great, very inspirational, great friends, and you know, thanks to Luke for being a good mentor. Uh, Holden for writing bad. I mean, good <laughs> <laughs> and. Um, okay, I don't know you that much, but you <laughs> have um, to talk to. Um, and yeah, like even people at home, like the old Limbrook students that ran the math camp club, they were really inspiring. But I guess some, uh, something special I would like to say. I, I understand many people don't actually have this benefit that I have, but I would like to thank my parents for, um, I guess, I think they handled um, my rel relationship with math competitions very well. They really allowed me to pursue this passion myself, and like they didn't ever really push me to do better. I just wanted to do better myself, and I actually suspect that if they pushed me harder, I would have been less motivated because that's just, I don't know, I'm okay. rebellious. But I think um, they really like supported me and uh, let me explore this passion as far as I wanted to, and I think that's, I think that's the best way to handle something like that. I, so, I think yeah. my parents are probably going to watch this, though, like, let's pretend I didn't forget them, okay? <laughs> Thanks to my parents! <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, like, yeah, same as Eric, I would say. But, um, yeah, I'll kind of echo the sentiment. Um, right, Eric, also, if you ever want to hang out at MIT, I am very down. <laughs> See you around next year! <laughs> you just back as well, yeah. Um, I'm... Tempted to do this like an Oscar speech or something. <laughs> <laughs> Go for it. Um, so I'd like to thank my parents, of course, and everyone else at MOP, the staff, Luke, Holden, Isabella, the rest of the team, but of course, um, 
Evan, Poe, all the staff, all the other mobbers, um, everyone I've ever met, everyone I've ever done math with, they've been very encouraging. Um, I feel like I've been, like Eric, I've been very fortunate that like my relationship with math has never been toxic in any way. Um, I've been given a lot of liberty, a lot of space to kind of do whatever I want. I have a lot of time left over to do things that aren't math that I enjoy, such as an excessive amount of video games. Um, like, <laughs> Like, like I, I, I feel super privileged and super lucky to be here, and um, yeah, just I'd like to thank my parents again, um, you know, for all their encouragement, all their help, and yeah, that's what I do here. Yeah, I, I would like to thank my parents, obviously, for like, all their help that they've given me in supporting my math competition career. Uh, and also, oh, like all the mob staff for making in like, this summer and, and last summer like, such a great experience. Have lots of fun, especially throwing water balloons at Holden. <laughs> 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 I have good problems here. <laughs> 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 well, I mean, you can't, we can't flash you if you're not there. So yeah, you yeah, have yeah. to get oh, yeah. somehow. <laughs> um, I guess we're just doing this now. Um, I would also like to thank my parents, especially my mom, for like getting me started. Um, I like to thank Mr. Frost, who is my math counts coach, and he really got me into like math counts and, by extension, like AMC, AV, and stuff. Um, my math coach at Lexington High with Miss Cordero, um, all the other pe like p team members on the Lexington High School math team. Um, and like everyone here, especially Max for doing problems with me, <laughs> and uh, Alex for being very inspiring, <laughs> and uh, also like other mothers, especially like Tiger and um, Andrew for being with me at math camp last year and getting me to do more math. Uh, I'd like to also thank my parents. They like, introduced me to math competitions, basically, and they've been very supportive of like all the competitions I've been doing. Uh, Besides that, I'd also like very thankful for all the friends I've made at MOP. They've been great to like hang up, just hang out with and do problems with over the last few years. Well, thank you. I think that's everything. Yeah. 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 Thank you all for being on our podcast. And, uh, best of luck at the Iowa. Yeah. yeah. We should Let's come Team us. USA. Yeah. We yeah. Team good luck in the comments or something. Team, best of luck in the comments. Thanks right. for watching. Don't forget your phone number. <laughs> <laughs>